Hello people, so welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1063 and Oda decides to flip the script yet again with the ending of this chapter. Before the ending of this chapter it started into a family affair and there's no, nothing more apparent than what we got with the cover story with Brule crying because number one Cracker has been frozen solid like we saw in Cocker Island and Brule is also crying because she's making reference to the fact that Pudding has been kidnapped by the Vince Smokes. Now, I call BS on that immediately, because this is something that I mentioned in the beginning stages of this cover story when Pudding was reintroduced in Coco Island. I'm pretty much banking on the fact that Pudding willingly went with the Vince Smokes. This does two things. Number one, this brings the opportunity for Raju and Pudding to have a moment, which is something that I called for early on in this cover story, because she, she kind of has... Pudding shot Raju in the leg and tried to f pretty much kill Sanji. So there really wasn't much interaction after that involving Pudding and Raju. So there has to be a moment where Pudding kind of like offers her apologies to Raju for what she did to not only Raju but also to Sanji as well. So that moment has to come. So what better way than now? But if Pudding goes with the Finn Smokes, that definitely guarantees we're going to get to see Sanji reunite with Pudding at some point. I called this out the ending of Hawkeye Island, so this is nothing new. And if anybody's thinking that this isn't going to have an impact on the story, I'd like to remind you that back at the end of Wano when we saw Shanks, they made reference to Bartholomew, who was like burning down Shanks' Jolly Roger and sticking up Luffy's Jolly Roger in an area that was under Shanks' jurisdiction. And that got referenced in the chapter, so, and that took place in a cover story that Oda referenced in that chapter. Not only that, we also had Jinbei find a Poneglyph that later, back in Whole Cake Island, delivered that to Big Mom. And I love the beginning st stages of this chapter when we see the aftermath of Chopper, Luffy and Barney stuffing their faces. We, we also find out that Barney pretty much gets a similar size as Luffy when she stuffs herself eating. So that was kind of funny. Also, we come to find out they both lose weight pretty quickly. Because when we see Vega Punk 6, she's pretty much, oh, you sure can eat and you have bulging bellies. But when we see them in the next panel, they'll pretty much thin out again. So, And in this chapter, we don't get to see any more of the Vega Punk 6. So as of right now, we've only seen two of them. We've, we heard from another on the Dendam movie. We haven't seen them. So we've only seen two thus far. So and this is where things get interesting because we see some assistance of Vega Punk, the same size as Chop. And Barney describes it. It's supposed to be assistance of the lab. And then Luffy all of a sudden manages to go shopping. And Luffy manages to pick out an outfit for himself, which, by the way, has SSG written on it. So that confirms the fact that Ze the Zephyrians that Vegapunk created are the SSG that Fujitora was talking about. So I'm glad that got clarified. And Barney's like, yo, where, where the hell did you get that outfit? And Luffy's like, yo, there's like a fashion vendor machine now. Is that the way of the future? Where we get to pick clothes for vendor machines? That would be pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. She's also a stickler for... Clothes shopping, so that's another trait of Barney we didn't know about, so that's pretty cool. She suits herself real quick and she gets a battle suit, which looks pretty awesome. Chopper gets a new outfit as well, but Barney describes this like outfit as light. The boots are like floating, and the moment I heard that, I can't be the only one thinking that there has some connection with the raid suits that the, the Vince Smokes wear. It's going to be interesting to hear in the anime whether or not the boots that Barney wears make the same sound effects have the same sound as the boots that Jim will wear. The tour with Luffy, Barney and Chopper and Jimbei pretty much gets put on hold with the arrival of the pacifista police. Another pacifista looking like Kuma in a police outfit. And I'm guessing because they took the outfits, stole them and make some thieves, so unleashes his attack. Pacifista beam that blows up the area. And then Luffy's about to use gear third arm and hockey to stop the Kuma's pacifista beam, but all of a sudden, Jory Barney just kicks the hell out of Luffy to stop him from hitting Kuma. It's surprising for two reasons. Number one, the fact that Luffy didn't use Future Sight to see this attack coming, and number two, the fact that he immediately attacked. It looks like both Barney and Luffy avoid the blast, but it still hits the area. And this is something that I noticed, like the the traits, but this thing was more about establishing a connection between Luffy and Barney more than anything else, because Luffy addressed Barney as Barney and not bogey like he has been. So again, that's improved. That's different from the way he interacted with Law. He never mentioned his real name. 
in fact neither did anybody from the Straw Hat so that's different in itself I pointed that out in the last chapter so now it has emotional attachment here because Barney's like yo he's my father I don't want to hurt him but Luffy's like yo that's just a passive reason to get the hell out of there it is cool we get to see this side of Barney that we haven't seen before we get to see a panel of Kuma holding a little Barney in the past I mean, this kills three birds with one stone. One, we get to learn more about Kuma, we get to learn more about Barney, and we get to, we get to establish a connection between Barney and Luffy. So that's what you do here. So that's pretty cool on the part of Oda. Like I said, the blast is about to fire. I'm assuming Luffy got Barney the hell out of there. But Oda cuts away for dramatic effect and goes into another explosion in the new world. And this is the part of the chapter that kind of threw me for a loop because I did not expect this scenario. So we see that... Teach is pursuing law, and this is the part that kind of threw me for a loop. But I guess Oda is like playing, making reference to the fanfics that people have having for law having a gender change for whatever reason, like to hide from him. But it doesn't last long, so it's interesting. It just feels like a complete shout out to the people who have, who's been having this fan, these fanfics about law having a gender change. And it's not just him either. We see mem other members of the crew, but it doesn't last long because when they surface, they're pretty much normal again. They're being chased by Teach, which is a problem, but having deal with the uncle, I love this moment from Law because it's like, yo, I, I'm, I'll be fine. Our clashes with the Emperors taught me. So that that's where they service. Law ch switches himself back to normal. And then out of nowhere, it comes Jesus Burgess, who lifts up an entire mountain, throws the piece of this mountain directly at the Politang, and then Law uses room to obviously dip and get up and avoid it. But obviously he teleports and Blackbeard's waiting on a gigantic bird that's pretty much about to pass out because of the weight of Blackbeard. I thought it was interesting we didn't see the other crew members of Teach when he was dealing with Boa Hancock back at Amazon Lily and that's where yo zee ha 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 we meet again Lord. and the fact that he said that obviously makes reference to the Rocky Port incident that he was involved with Kobe. By the way we didn't get any reference to Kobe we didn't get to see him at all he may play a factor in this as well. I don't know. Again, like I said, the most unpredictable out end into this chapter. And ever since after Wano, Oda has been hitting a home run with these chapters. Like, I did not expect Teach to show up in front of Law. Teach is like, yo, I, I, knew once, I knew once you, Straw Hat, and Kid left Wano, you, one of you would wind up here. So he was waiting for, it just happened to be Law that shows up in this direction. Which implies to me that maybe there's a Rob Poneglyph in that direction. This is pretty much what it's leading to. Teach is like, yo, now keep Big Mom and Kaido out of the picture. It's going to make things more interesting. And then he says, Kaido had one. Just how many Rob Poneglyph rubbings have you got? I'll be taking them off you. So he's not after Laura's double fruit, but the other crew members could target as well because they're there too. Although that would imply you have to kill off Law, which I don't see that happen. Which I'll get into in a minute. But Law is like, yo... You took the words right out of my mouth. Winner takes all, so let's do this. I love the end of this chat because Law's ready. And it kind of implies to me that Law and Blackbeard had a clash. Because why else would Law have that confidence mouth? He's up against Teach. So that's the ending of the chapter. And a, and a darn good one. I did not expect Law versus Blackbeard. If you did, props to you. But I didn't see this. Not a 1v1. Especially not this soon after Wano. So that's crazy. My, th my first thought is since Blackbeard's after the copies of the Rob Poneglyph and Law says winner takes all, does that mean Blackbeard has a copy of bought another one? This could go one of two ways. Either Law loses, Teach gets the copies of the Rob Poneglyph and this forces Law to somehow join, join up with Luffy again down the road. Because I don't, I don't see Oda killing off Law. Law's too popular. It's not the same thing as Yamato where Oda's going to change his mind and have Teach kill kill off Law. That's the other reason why I say this. Law has an interest in the hist in the history of the Will of D. He was asking Robin about it. So you don't do that. That's why I say I can't see Law dying. I could see a similar scenario to where we got with Ace and Blackbeard. Where Ace didn't die but he did get captured. And it caused a ripple effect upon the One Piece world. That caused the war in Marineford. So I can see something similar. I can see Law being captured, but I I do I can't see him being killed off, even if it is Blackbeard. And that's the other thing too, because it makes this chapter pretty much confirms they've had a running in the past. Teach says, "Yo, it's been a while, hasn't it, Law?" 
that also gets me thinking, did Law fight Blackbeard? Because we know he was there with Kobe. Because, look, listen, Law's got that confident white. He, he knows he, he's going to be fine because he says, I've already had a running with the encore. But the problem is, if he doesn't know anything about Teens' abilities, then he's going to be... He's going to fall prey like Bo Hancock did to teach his yummy yummy no me to nullify the double fruits. We know that's what Teach can do and it's a problem. If Lord knows about this, that's going to give him an edge because he's the, easily the smartest member of the worst generation. I wouldn't underestimate Lord at all against Teach, even if it is Blackbeard, fi final villain or not. But this is definitely an interesting scenario. It's a battle. It's a battle of 2Ds involved. And the other thing too, we get more interaction between Bonnie and Luffy, and it's not just a comedic gag now. There's more, there's more emotional, there's more emotional attachment, which is going to bring Luffy and Bonnie closer, and furthering the connection going forward, furthering this alliance going forward. So I can't wait to see where that goes. So I can't wait to see how Oda plays that off. It's going to be interesting, though. Blackbeard versus Law, I sign me up. So that's going to do it for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like the review if you did, a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe to my One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys.